All right, time for the area volume FRQ. This is the the last FRQ specific video that I've got, even for BC, because for BC, the other FRQ types I mix in with the content. So here we are. Um, these show up nearly every exam. You got to do some sort of area volume. Usually you're given either one graph or two, and then you're asked to find the area of some region and then find the volume of some solid involving that region. It could be a cross-sectional solid where the cross-sections are perpendicular to the x-axis or squares or something like that, or it could be revolving around a line or an axis, which is just a line. Um, usually for those revolutions, you don't actually end up calculating it. You um, just write the expression, or you have a calculator and you just do it in there. That said, sometimes it does show up that you have to do it by hand. Um, also with these, they might ask multiple area or multiple volume questions, or they might just fill it out with some random stuff. Could go either way. Uh, things to remember, the area between two functions is given by top minus bottom. You integrate top minus bottom. If they don't give you the interval that you're supposed to use, you set the functions equal to each other and solve. Um, sometimes we get those side-by-side -side regions. Remember, it switches from one function to the other, in which case we break the integral up at their intersection point. Um, and then we'll do like the integral from 1 to 3 plus the integral from 3 to 5, something like that, of those two separate functions. Um, be very careful to not forget area formulas. Not that they're really that hard. Triangle, 1 half base times height. Square, square it. Rectangle, base times height. So those are important because remember, if we have an area and we integrate that, we get the volume. Um, also, be very careful about revolving versus cross-sectional solids, particularly if there are multiple functions involved. Just be very careful about what you're calling the radius or what you're calling the base of some shape. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. Um, let R be the region in the first quadrant enclosed by the graphs of f of x equals 8x cubed and g of x equals sine of pi x, as shown above. Write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 1 half. All right, easy enough. Uh, this is a no calculator of our cube, by the way. We know it should be y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Luckily for us, at x equals 1 half, we're given this point. We know that the y value is 1. So all we have to do is find m, because we know x1 is 1 half. We know y1 is 1. We just need m. So let's find f prime of x, because that's how we're going to get the slope. Uh, the derivative is going to be 24x squared. Now if I plug 1 half into that, that's 1 half squared. So it's 24 times 1 half squared, which is 24 times 1 fourth which is 6. So that means this is going to be y minus 1 equals 6 x minus 1 half. There we go, there's our tangent line. All right, next thing, find the area of r. Let r be the region again in the first quadrant with f of x and g of x. So what you have to do, you have to figure out which one's on the top, right? Because we want the region, the area of the region between two curves. We need to know which one's on top. So there's a couple ways you can do it. One, you can know your function families. Two, if you don't know your function families, you need to pick a value of x in between the endpoints of the interval. So remember, this, this region is going to go from 0 to 1 half. So you would need to pick any x value on the interior of that interval to figure out which one's on top. Now, I know my function family, so I know sine is going to be the one on top right now. So what I need to do is I need to do the integral from 0 to 1 half for sine of pi x minus 8x cubed. Okay, so if you're not super comfortable with antiderivatives, now is the time to get comfortable because it's going to be way easier to know this antiderivative trick for that sine of pi x than have to sit there, split it into two integrals, do u sub in one of them, or do u sub and then change back to the right variable and it just ends up being a mess. It's way easier if you can just remember when I'm looking at this, I know if I were to take the derivative of sine of pi x that I would end up multiplying by pi because of chain rule. So if I do the antiderivative, it should be 1 over pi. So remember, if you're doing the antiderivative, you just multiply by the reciprocal of what you would have done for chain rule. So I know that this is going to be negative 1 over pi cosine of pi x 
minus 8x to the fourth over 4, or just 2x to the fourth. Then we're going from 0 to 1 half. Okay. So over here, we'll finish that out. Negative 1 over pi, cosine of pi halves when I plug in the 1 half, that was the upper bound, minus 24, 24, that's not right, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember it without looking back. It was minus 2 times 1 half to the fourth. There's what the upper bound plugged in. And then minus, plug in the lower bound, negative 1 over pi. Cosine of 0 was the lower bound. Minus 2 times 0 to the fourth. So now I need to go through and evaluate all this. Cosine of pi halves is going to be 0, so that's gone. 1 half to the fourth is 1 16th times 2 is negative 1 eighth. Cosine of 0 is 1, so this becomes plus 1 over pi. And then 2 times 0 to the 4th is just 0. So there's my answer. So that antiderivative shortcut saves so much time. Please, please, please start working on it if you're not already good at it. Um, again, if you were to do chain rule and you'd just multiply by constant to do the derivative, if you were doing the antiderivative, you'd multiply by 1 over that constant. All right, last thing, right, but do not evaluate an integral expression for the volume of the solid generated when r is rotated about the horizontal line y equals 1. So right here, I'm going around that horizontal line. So remember when we do revolutions, we have to consider is there space in between the functions and the axis of revolution that we need to get rid of. We also need to figure out which function is further away from the axis of revolution. It's not top minus bottom, it's outer minus inner. So I know that 8x cubed, this one right here, not that I'm circling it in a really identifiable way, but that function 8x cubed is the one further from the axis of revolution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate from 0 to 1 half, and remember, it's function minus axis squared. And I know 8x cubed has to go first because it's the outer one. So 8x cubed minus 1 squared minus sine of pi x minus 1 squared dx. Oh, I kind of ran out of room. And remember, so this is supposed to be pi r squared, but I always, always, always just put my pi out front. There you go. Now, I know a lot of people um, will do, it really, it should be in this case, it should be um, 1 minus our functions because it's above it, but it really doesn't matter because we're going to square it. It's going to come out the same either way. Um, so that's it for this FRQ, but I do want to point out real quick, had this said R is something like, R is the base of a solid, where cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis, I'm not going to write it out all out, perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. So let's say, it's, let's say it asked that just for sake of argument so that I can include this type of question in the video because it wasn't in this FRQ. Um, R is the base where cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. How would we find the volume of that one? Well, in that case, the distance between the two functions, that's what represents the base of the square. So if that's a side length of my square, to get the area of one of the squares, it should be sine of pi x minus 8x cubed. That represents the side length of a square. Then I go like this. Now I have the area of a square. And I would integrate that from 0 to 1 half. And I very much ran out of room, but I hope that you can just indulge me and pretend like you know exactly what I just wrote. Oh, and then a little blue squiggle up here on there. But So it would be sine of pi x minus 8x cubed quantity squared, and that's what we would integrate because that square would represent the area of one of our cross-sectional slices. All right, let's look real quick at the scoring guidelines. In the scoring guidelines, 
we got a point for having f prime of one half and we got a point for the actual answer. Um, in part B, we got a point for setting it up. So even if you panic on the, in the antiderivatives, you can get a point for setting it up. Two points for antiderivatives though. So you could at the very least, at the very, very, very least, get a point for 8x cubed, even if the chain, the, the u sub scares you for some reason. You could at least do one of them. Um, and then this last one, you got a point for the limits and the constant, two points for the integrand. I imagine that would be one point for each of the two functions. All right, that's it. That's it for area and volume. We'll have some fun problems to do in class on it.